Um, Anaseo, my name is Kavita Ramdas. I am the director of the Women's Rights Program in the Open Society Foundations, which is based in New York, but also works in many parts of the world. I'm from India originally, but I have lived and worked in the United States for more than 30 years. I'm very honored to be with you. Yes, I, I have read um, quite a bit about this. And also when I was in uh, South Korea, the last time we actually had a very interesting conversation. I gave a talk at the Seoul National University and many young men were in that uh, conversation and they raised this question and they said they felt uncomfortable with the term feminist and what did I understand about the term feminist? So young men have to serve in military service and that again is a very high price that um, um, both is tiring for young men physically, but also spiritually and emotionally. And I can see from having done my reading that it also, they feel that that has an economic cost as well. And so there is part of um, a conversation happening right now that why isn't it that young women have to serve in the military? If we are talking about gender equality, then it should be equal all the way across. Is that really a priority for us? And when we say women should serve in the military, are we just accepting that we will always have a military and therefore we have to have military as a solution? Rather than that, can we not begin to say, okay, maybe there should be voluntary service that could be either military service or maybe it's community service. Maybe you, you do two years of national service for Korea, but it doesn't have to be in the military. Maybe you do um, national service in medicine um, or teaching. You know, there are many ways in which the government of Korea could consider a national service option, which is required for people of all genders. Mm -hmm. And some of it could be military and some of it could be non-military. Then I think you have a situation in which rather than talking about military service, you're talking about service to the country of Korea that is expected of all people, no matter what their gender, but with the recognition that it doesn't have to be militarized that there, there can be different ways of serving the nation. I don't know if that's helpful, but those are my ideas. So let me answer both of those questions, uh, both the military question and the question about other countries. Um, so the answer is yes, I have seen it in every country in the world where most countries in the world actually. Um, my sense is that this um, concern amongst young men that is being voiced is largely to do with a sense of economic pressure mm -hmm. and that it comes from an environment in which for a long time, I think um, South Korea just had a period of unparalleled growth and an extremely successful economy. That economy came at the price of um, men working very, very hard and very long hours, but also women working behind the scenes to enable men to work that hard. Um, taking care of the family, taking care of parents, taking care of children, making sure that people were fed and house was clean and all these things that we refer to as the care economy. The men didn't have to worry who is making my food, who is keeping my house clean, who is taking care of the children, who is making sure they did their homework, who is making sure they get piano lessons. They just needed to go, do their work, come home. All those other things taken care of magically. But magic doesn't make an economy work. Labor makes an economy work. And this labor has to be recognized. And this labor has to be acknowledged. And this labor is disproportionately done by women and girls all across the world, as in South Korea. So that's true. And so, of course, it is true that because Korea made a conscious decision to make an economic, a very high priority on quick economic growth and a very high priority on education for all people, regardless of gender. As a result, yes, of course, both Korean women and Korean men are much advanced um, compared to the, you know, uh, to, to many young people in many countries across the world. But a level of education um, and a level of privilege because of your economic growth does not mean that there isn't still patriarchy in the environments of um, Japan or Korea or girl children were not only abandoned, but actually killed at birth because they were not valued. 
and they were seen as an economic burden on the family, not an advantage to the family. Changes that happen in an economy can happen much more fast than changes that happen in a culture. For changes to happen in a culture, it is not just wearing Western clothes. For me, feminism is not about what you have between your legs. Feminism is what you have between your ears. And there can be men who are deeply feminist because they truly believe in equality and respect and understanding for all people. To be a feminist is not to have respect and understanding only for women. It is to have respect and understanding for all people, no matter their gender, no matter their age, no matter their race, no matter their ethnicity. And if we can come from that place of respect, then I think the response to young men is, look, but I think certainly as I've been growing older, I have really appreciated a lot of the things he has taught me in the way he approaches things that um, sometimes the best way to stand up for your rights is not to yell and shout. It is to listen to the other person's, really listen to the other person's perspective and really try to understand where they're coming from in their heart. So like, when you hear the young Korean men, what you may hear is anger and you may say it's misogyny and you may say it's violence. But maybe if you hear a little bit more closely, you may hear pain. But that you will never resolve this from a position of hostility and anger.